Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanim. This XRP thing is getting deep. It's getting real deep. I'm just I'm, I'm combing through all of these documents. And I'm telling you, I really believe they're going to snatch. They're going to make an attempt to snatch XRP out the hands of retail by buying up all the XRP. I really believe that. I really do. I'm looking at all of the different governmental ties. I'm looking at what they announced as far as the banks that they're working with. Hundreds of banks. I don't believe it. No, I don't believe it. I don't. I believe that. The, let's go by connections. I believe they have thousands. At this point right now, I believe they have thousands. They're sitting on thousands of bank connections. They haven't actuated them yet. Uh, and you know why they haven't actuated them yet? They haven't they haven't done that because then they might have to make an announcement. It could leak. They don't need a leak. So a lot of institutions, they go they go off of verbals for a short time until they're absolutely sure. Why? Because if you have something leak, a major announcement leak, like, for example, MoneyGram. Stellar didn't want MoneyGram to come out at that time. Do you remember? Somebody leaked it. Who was the leaker? Nobody knows. There's leakers in it. Right. So. If you don't actuate a partnership, you don't have a solid memorandum of understanding or a contract signed just yet, then only you, whoever are the deal makers and the banks, only those entities know. Leakers can't get a hold of that information. It's not sitting in the database. I believe that XRP has hundreds, not hundreds, but my apologies, thousands of banks lined up. I mean, listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong, but I feel like I'm not. It's been quite some time since they had they had like 300 to 400 banks signed up. I don't believe it has just remained at a standstill. You have all of these different uh, um, large business entities, non-banking financial institutions and central banks coming to Ripple to learn from them, to learn about the XRPL, to learn about RippleNet as well and XRP. There's absolutely no way that um, they're allowing, for example, that they allow James Wallace, for example, to come sit on their panels and, and um, divulge in information to them in a very authoritative way and not have some sort of uh, benefit from that. Ripple is a for profit company. There must be benefit to them in order for them to take certain actions that it, it only makes sense. Now, if they have thousands of banks lined up and we know XRP was never for retail, then there has to be a reason why they would be sitting on those announcements if they're sitting on those announcements, right? So you have that. Suddenly I'm seeing a lot of articles being written about XRP and banking the unbanked. What are you talking about? XRP is mainly bank to bank. Transactions, interbank payments, right? Okay, so we have that. But then what I'm thinking is, listen, article writers get their information from somewhere. All right. Now, I'll say this, like a lot of news reporters and researchers, they call the, they call places. They make a contact. They're not going to tell you who the contact is, but they have a contact. That contact fills them in on information. And they build a rapport over time where better information gets fed to you over time. Right. Like even the beginning of this channel, if you remember, like I would call the central banks, I would call different places. I even call IBM. Right. So, I mean, like that's how a lot of researchers do these things. So if there's a bevy of articles coming out and just strangely out of nowhere, because I, I don't understand it. Right. No, I mean, like I didn't I don't think that that should be taking place about XRP and banking the unbanked, things like that. It tells me that maybe someone is telling them something. Maybe the banks are saying, you know what? Sure, XRP for interbank payments, but don't you forget we want that unbanked money. Why do I say that? Listen, they made it clear, hey, we want a piece of that unbanked money. If you've been reading documents from the Bank of International Settlements the last month, um, I'm thief. You know, throw the World Bank in there as well. But for the World Bank, stretch it out to like the last three months or so. They want that unbanked money. They want to get into those corridors and they don't want to have to build it themselves. So I think that they want XRP to do everything. Just my humble opinion. I think they're getting greedy and they're setting it up where 
they can maximize the benefit. Why would they only want to do interbank payments with XRP? I can see it from that, that perspective. No, they might want to do, do the interbank payments, bank to unbank. It, what we're looking at is any of the banks that can't em, employ or deploy an XRP based system or an XLA, uh, XLM based system or Algorand, one of the bank coins, they're, they're putting, putting themselves in a position for global banking domination the likes of which we have never seen. Think about that for a minute. Right now, they're limited, right? Even with their CBDCs, they're still quite limited, correct? And I believe what we're looking at, they're looking at the biggest scrape up of money of all time. Now, how does that affect us? Is Think about how that would affect the price of any of these assets that might be involved. But once again, the psychological warfare that they've been employing on the people, it's been unbelievable people left and right have been leaving crypto as a whole i know because they tell me um they've been selling everything they've done you know um so the psychological warfare the fud has been working i think there's just going to be a small group it's already a pretty small group when it comes to the bank coins but i think there's going to only be a small group left if if we make it that far right there, if, if we ever get regulatory clarity, things are rolled out. There's just going to be a small group of us. That's it. And they don't care about that at all. And they can buy everything up with just reallocated funds. Once they have the, first of all, they're sitting on enough capital. I mean, their fiat currency, uh, they can get that anywhere at any time. The Fed is going to bail banks out. Listen, they pumped $400 billion into the economy to save these banks. Listen, money is nothing to them, right? Um, and if you're talking about governmental entities, gov heavily uh, governmental associated associated entities, well, they're not playing with their money anyway. Now, are they? Right? <laughs> they're not. So um, they can buy up all the XRP, drive that price high. Now, once again, I want to revisit the uh, the nodes and the voting on the XRPL. Remember, the XRPL was voted for you to have to hold, was it 10 XRP for an account? Something like that. They can vote again. They can vote again. And proxies can be put in. That's easy for some of these powerful entities. If they vote to raise that XRP, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, 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 requirement, and they raise that price up, it, they don't even have to raise it up to a crazy level. I do think it's going to go to a high level. They don't have to raise it to a, a crazy level. And they will squeeze every, people would not get the opportunity anymore. Think about that. High price XRP or higher price XRP and you, let's say they raise the requirement to 200 XRP, something like that. Who's going to be able to really play and get in? Not the people from the bottom that were really benefiting from crypto, not them. No. That voting is key and who can vote is key. Right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm seeing it. Maybe you see it from a different angle and you can let me know. Okay. But it's getting deep. These bank coins, for example, um, people are not seeing how powerful what we're involved in is. And that's the reason they're holding back crypto, but they're not holding back AI, right? They're rolling out AI legislation in Europe already. They're trying to get stuff drawn up. Not rolling out, but they're trying to get it drawn up. Type that in. You'll see the articles pop up. But um, they don't fear AI in the way. They're going to leash AI, leash it, and use it. But it doesn't directly uh, uh, affect capital like, like the bank coins do, like the DLTs do. The DLTs literally reach into corridors and snatch money. And because they're decentralized, and look, there's, there's a lot of ways you can utilize and maximize opportunity on decentralized applications. Because of that, the people are more apt to trust DLTs, okay? So when they go into those corridors, they're not going to be rejected like uh, like the CBDCs are. As you saw, we covered an article in the last video where the, they did a poll and the people that don't use banks or they're underbanked, whatever you want to say, they use cash more. They still say, hey, we're not using CBDCs. Hey, we don't trust CBDCs. The banks know that, but they're not dumb. You can you can say that they're bad, they're evil, however you want to phrase it, but they're not ignorant right so they're looking for a back door into people's pockets to say you know the people i mean 
So this is why one reason why the BIS was looking for a long time. They were studying. What was it they were studying? They were studying uh, uh, how DeFi is not actually decentralized. Remember, remember that? You can look it up for yourself. You can research all of this. They wanted to do, they did that so they could learn how and if DeFi could be controlled. Why? Why? My humble opinion. So they can, uh, at some point in the future, and I said this many times, the, the uh, technology is going to continue to evolve. The banks are not beyond building Trojan horses through proxy. Everything these days is done through proxy. Even fighting done through proxy. Okay? They're not beyond building Trojan horses where the people feel like they're they're using this one company, but that the people never know that that company is owned by another company that's owned by another company that's owned by this big entity. Sort of like how entertainment industry really is run by just a few companies, but people don't know that. One company bought another, then that big company got bought by a bigger company. You see where I'm going with this? So some people may say, well, I don't want to drink Coca-Cola, not knowing Coca-Cola is owned by this company that owns that, that beverage over there. So the other beverage you go to is also owned by the same companies that own Coca-Cola, right? Things like that, just as an example. I'm just throwing stuff out there to try to show connection, right? Um, but that's prox that's a method of proxy. So... Another thing that shows me how deep everything is, 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 is getting, it's been on my mind. Not only when Stellar started working with the United Nations, I said, whoa, whoa, we're getting deep here. The implications of that are mind blowing. Then on top of that, when Stellar got the call from the White House, what? Something, let me tell you something, it's getting very, very deep. Whatever we're involved in is much bigger than what people anticipate. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of capital running through because of these connections, because of the necessity of these programs. All right. And the time is near because they're, they're already done situating themselves and making sure once again, they're going to get their slice of the pie. So that's something that's, that's been on my mind. Smart contracts, smart contracts. Um, they want to use those greatly. That's going to come in handy because as smart contract technology uh, evolves, and it will, it will advance. The future of distributed ledger technologies is far beyond what we're experiencing today. Just my humble opinion. The innovation has to continue. It has to. This is why, one reason why, I don't think that the bank coins are worried about the banks and the technology that they pretty much have stolen from the bank coin companies to try to make their own weak versions called CBDCs. And one might may sit back and say to themselves and, you know, ask themselves rather, why would you let these people in on the technology that you specialize in? And it's because while they're at this point and they're, they've caught up to this point in the technology, the DLTs are already up here. They're sitting on technology. They're sitting on innovations. They continue to bring in the most brilliant minds possible. Now, also, let's discuss this here. The collapse, the rapid collapse of the banking system is something people aren't watching close enough. The banking system is being allowed to collapse, sabotaged even. None of it makes any logical sense. None of it. Like, as... I don't know how to draw a conclusion at this point from all the data that I have covered other than it's on purpose. Why? Because in order to leave this house, but get a bigger house, so to speak, right? They don't want someone else to have that house. They burn it to the ground. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen funny things like that before. Uh, there was a video once, if you will permit me to have a little bit of fun right now. There was a video once where a, a guy, I don't know if it was fake, but he wanted to throw out his couch and his stuff, but um, he didn't want anybody else to come take it, so he cut everything. <laughs> no, maybe a comedian was talking about this. No, I think it was a comedian. Maybe it was Sebastian Maniscalco, and, and, and so I think it was his father, and his father would cut everything in half. <laughs> He cut the couch. In, he threw out his couch. He cut the couch in half. <laughs> he cut the couch in half. Oh my word! Oh, oh my, 
My apologies, people. That is hilarious. Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine? Right? You're going, or you just you're, you're going around some neighborhood, and you, you know, there's a time where you you put out stuff that you don't want, and in certain neighborhoods, they put out a lot of good stuff. It's like almost brand new, right? And some people will come around with like these uh, pickup trucks, and they just they're on it. They're taking stuff. You imagine you pull up to a house. <laughs> And everything is cut in half. That's, that's insane. <laughs> my apologies. Oh man, I just I'm picturing that in my mind. But anyway, it's like that in my in my opinion. What the banks are doing, they want to destroy the old system because the big banks, the big banks in particular, they don't want. The smaller banks taking that spot. No, they believe that they always should have control. The smaller banks should stay in their place. And the central banks, along with the larger commercial banks, the central banks are sort of on that same accord. They want a grab at power that they've never had before. Not only that, they want to survive the changing of the age. It will be and is rapidly becoming a multipolar world. How do you survive if you're going to be greatly limited and you have this greater portion of the world that will not use you and will not obey your orders any longer they don't need your capital anymore and your capital is going to be greatly diminished how do you uh compete with that or survive that you don't compete with it you survive you go a lot you go with the flow the only way that they can do that is through having new intermediaries which are really no intermediaries because of how the systems run the new financial system xrp xlm algorand quant with overledger people forget how mind-blowing quant is with their ties to see a chain and see a partners this is a, quant is a rich person's coin in my humble opinion it's my humble opinion maybe i'm wrong maybe things don't shake out the way that i'm saying but if you look at it quant is a rich person's coin it will blow past 1k 2k given the right conditions there's 14 million i'm, I'm estimating right you go look at the numbers for yourself 14 million quant total you're constantly hearing Gilbert Verdian at the head of Quant say how important QNT token is to the chain. Then on top of that, you look at their partnerships with CIA. I'll say it again. CIA chain and CIA partners. They have access to over 500 banks. And that's just the start. Once Quant is proving itself, once XRP is proving itself, more banks will come they listen when you say new financial new financial system understand that what swift is what the banking system is now is what these companies stand to become swift has thousands of banks why wouldn't xrp have thousands of banks why wouldn't quant have thousands of banks is working with once there's uh, uh, regulations what would stop them from working with all of these different banks when they offer something unique that no one else can offer? Whether it's access to corridors they can't, they, they can't uh, currently access, whether it's over ledger, where they glue the systems together. What would stop them from having thousands of banks? If they, if under all this pressure, if they already have XRP, 300 to 400 banks, quant, access i won't say that they've signed the deals with them but they're working with sia that's all they need to do is sign that partnership with sia and they did they have access to over 500 if they have done that now with all this pressure all this fire what can they do when there's not pressure and fire anymore what can they do then i'm keeping all of this in mind This is much deeper, I think, than most people will, will ever anticipate. And the rise, I'm more on board now. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm at, I'm 60, 40, right? 60% now, I feel the rise will be dramatically rapid, dramatically rapid so that people don't get a chance. I think, I think it's been well planned out from everything that I'm seeing. I think the rise at some point will be dramatic where people don't get a chance to get in. You know, there's a lot of people on the side have nothing and they're waiting. 
hoping they can get in at a good price at the right moment. People are like that all the time, especially in the stock market. When I used to be there, people used to always wait to the last second. Then I saw a couple stocks just go insane bananas. I was in early. By the time those people got in, let me tell you something. Some of these stocks were like $1.50, $2. By the time those people got in, they were at $12. $12. Now, I know that's not very high, but holy smart. And, and these are people where we know they, they were aware of that those particular stocks. Because on a lot of the stock exchanges, you have like these uh, message boards where everybody talks. You know? And it's, I think it's going to be like that again, except I don't think is I don't think I don't think it's going to take long at this point right now. I don't think it's going to take long for XRP quant XLM even to just go boom out of nowhere, out of nowhere. See, and there will be see, there's known catalyst, but we also have to account for the unknown catalyst. There's unknown catalyst. That's what people don't see, the unknown. And the unknown catalyst, as far as what I can gather, those are deals with banks that we don't know about. Those are dates when things are supposed to go online that we don't know about. And I think that's very strategic. So when they're ready to so-called flip the switch, dramatic rise, I mean, even with the hundreds of banks, what happens when they all start using it all at once? Nobody knows when. But anyway, I think that there, I think that that's one of the reasons why there will be a dramatic rise in price. It's so people can't get in. It's going to limit them. You can't imagine how many people only like to play with with uh, cents and dollars. That's it. A few. I mean, a few. It's sometimes it's all all that they can afford. Sometimes that's just their way. And sometimes people have made tons of money, you know, buying, uh, you know, what they call penny stocks and things of like, like that below a dollar. Um, a lot of people also have that mentality in crypto, which is a wise thing to do. Get in very at a very, very cheap, low price on some of these protocols. And yeah, they do skyrocket. So they're not going to play once that price is at a certain range. It just gets too expensive, so to speak. Not that they couldn't afford it. They definitely could. But they don't. That's not how they play. So that already eliminates a swath of people just by raising it. And keep in mind the voting thing that I said before about voting on the possible voting on how many XRP are required to have an account. So, and I believe, I'll, I'll, I'll go a step further uh, and I'll, I'll close out with this. I firmly believe that companies will be notified. And I'm not talking about the ones that are already signed up for XRP and Overledger and they're using Quant and you know, they're they're not those. You know, they have a relationship with Stellar. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the companies like I said before. They're not in yet. But they've let it be known when the time comes, we'll get in. I believe that they will be notified at a certain point in mass so that the price can rise rapidly. This is just my humble opinion, everyone. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just letting out my humble thoughts. But they'll be notified in mass, you know, through encrypted means, so it can't be hacked and, you know, you get a quadruple encryp encryption, whatever. Uh, and they'll be notified, hey, it's time, it's time. We've got infrastructures ready to go. And, you know, it's not an instantaneous thing, but the deployment of, of these services will be like nothing anybody ever seen, the, the, the dramatic deployment of them. And that will serve to raise that price up and keep retail out because according to all of these entities, they don't like the volatility. There is acceptable volatility. This one, I said this before, just like gold is acceptable volatility. We accept it. It's not too much. It's not too great. Right? It's, pre it's pretty, pretty balanced at most times. And that same thing can happen with the price of protocol, with assets, with digital assets. Why can't they have that same acceptable stability?
So it's within a range of prices. It doesn't fluctuate too much. That's because the capital that's there, it doesn't move as often as retail crypto capital. Something to pay attention to. Then people say XRP is the new gold or something like that. Or they said that about Bitcoin as well. Now, Bitcoin has too much volatility, too much volatility to be the new gold. But something else could be the new gold. But I, I think gold is a good example of acceptable volatility. And once that happens, once that happens, then XRP, quant, XLM, anything that anything that can reach acceptable stability. It's not completely stable. It's not locked in like a stable coin. That's not what I'm saying. Well, anything that can reach that will become a very good store of value, just like gold. And they're not going to complain about it, just like nobody complains about gold. Right. They all love gold. Right. Because it's a good store of value. So. Now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.